Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and rather recently we did something of a mega video exploring the top 20 best devil fruits in the series, but really, what is the fun in examining the best when you cannot directly compare it against the worst? And in this world of supremely magical fruit, there are certainly some, uh, some disappointments to say the least. Abilities that are less than desirable, or even kind of cool, but just not that great in the grand scheme of things. So that is what you shall be presented with here today. Now if you want a detailed breakdown of my methodology used to determine the world most disappointing fruit salad, then I do recommend that you watch my best devil fruits video first because I'm not going to go into a lengthy explanation here, but basically I went through every canon devil fruit in the series and assigned them a score out of 10 in the following four areas. We have power, which focuses purely on combative use, utility, which is designed to examine how useful an ability is in day-to-day -day life, there's potential, which is mostly there to compensate for terrible fruit users who display their powers quite poorly, or to reward a fruit concept that delivers limitless usage. And finally, we have detriment, which basically accounts for devil fruits actively make a user's life harder. Powers that come with a great price or curse or even just a mildly inconvenient activation requirement. And to be clear, a high score in detriment means that a fruit is close to perfect, whilst a low score means that it will impact your life significantly in a negative way, of course. Now, the whole detriment area wasn't a big focus in the best devil fruit video because the detriments were few and far between. However, for this worst devil fruits list, I can tell you right here and now that the detriment category is going to be one of our key players because some of these fruits are almost unbelievably awful. But basically those four scores out of 10 were added together and converted into a number out of 100 to give us our final ranking. And these were the 20 lowest ranking fruits. But before I appall you with frivolous fruit, I would highly encourage you to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, which, you know, yeah, I'd usually have a much more clever way of saying it, but my brain is fairly non-functional after having gone through 133 devil fruits just to make this video. But with that out of the way, let's begin with number 20, the Ton Ton no Mi. So when we're talking about the worst devil fruits, we do encounter a lot of these one very specific use fruits, which really drag their scores down. And the Ton Ton no Mi is actually phenomenal in terms of power because it can increase the user's weight to 10,000 tons. However, that power is so difficult to implement in combat because all of the user's attacks, or I guess I should say attack singular, are all basically the same thing. You float up, you crash down, completely telegraphed. And despite the fact that you can weigh up to 10,000 tons, it is a pretty useless attack overall. Meanwhile, it gets a six in utility, simply simply due to the float factor, and no floating is not flying, but it's still pretty amazing and a sure to be handy ability. What really plummets us though is potential, because this fruit has very, very little of that. Other than floating up and crashing down, it's a bit of a one hit wonder, but at the very least it doesn't come with, you know, huge detriments. You just need to watch out for crushing things and or people that you enjoy. But next up we have number 19, the Noro Noro no Mi. The vague ability to generate fictional Noroma photons, which slow anything down for 30 seconds, a pretty funky ability actually, but with some very average scores. The reason for the six in power is because this fruit doesn't grant raw power itself. Rather, it grants the opportunity to use your own power. Meaning that in a roughly equal matchup, the user of this fruit should always win because they deny that opportunity to their opponent, but that will still be due to the user's own innate power rather than that of the fruit. So in terms of power, it really is only as strong as the user themselves. For utility, yes, it is pretty cool to slow things down, but I do think it has a niche limit. It's good for emergencies and maybe some scientific research, but probably not a common everyday use like say floating or flying would be. Now Potential has a very low score because Foxy was actually quite a competent user and he invented all sorts of crazy accessories, but that only goes to show the extremes one needs to go to in order to make this fruit versatile in any way, because it's surprisingly not all that great in this area. Once again though, solid detriment score, you just need to watch out for the possibility of slowing yourself down, which can easily happen. But to truly explore the world of detriments, we are going to head to number 18, which will be the Baku Baku. No mi. The ability to eat anything is a great power, but also a gigantic curse. Here's the thing, this fruit scores brilliantly in utility and potential, because being able to eat anything and regurgitate out new objects is insanely versatile and only limited by the idea that it does require the sourcing of the materials to do so, as well as completing the task within 24 hours, because after that, the materials just disappear. Potentially outside of the user's butthole. But power is fairly solid as well. I mean, it's not amazing, but where this fruit tanks hard is detriment because the user of the Baku Baku no Mi comes with the curse of being perpetually hungry. After consuming this fruit, you will never be satiated ever again, and you will need to eat every second of every day for the rest of your life, which sounds like one of the most torturous things I've ever heard of. So there is a lot of benefit to be had here, but your life is going to be saddled with a profoundly negative impact in exchange, which is why this lands on the list of the worst devil fruits. But now we move on to number 17, the Kira Kira no Mi. And here's one that might be quite unexpected, but the more I think about it, the worse it becomes. 
terms. And this mostly stems from the idea that transforming into diamond very much burdens you with the properties of diamond, meaning that once part of your body becomes a substance, it is frozen in place and cannot move. That's why you'll only ever see Jozu partially transform into diamond because he needs to keep the other parts of his body free to, well, actually move. And sure, someone on Jozu's level can find this balance very well, but even he gets severely limited by it, and his attacks mainly consist of turning his upper body into diamond and just slamming into an enemy by running at high speeds. It's a very, very basic thing and there's not a whole lot else to do with it. Plus, with all of that in mind, it also doesn't gift the user with a whole lot of day-to-day -day benefit or potential for further development. So look, the Kirikura no Mi is just not great. Moving on though, we have number 16, the Barabara no Mi. And so next up is the great power of Captain Buggy, which actually scores pretty amazingly in both utility and potential, because being able to split your body into various pieces and create all sorts of faux levitation effects is going to be amazing in daily life, and the sharper of a mind the person has, the more potential is going to be unlocked with it. Where it loses points is definitely power, because this fruit doesn't really, well, grant any. It is a strictly utility and strategically based existence, which depends entirely on the user to wield it properly. Although it does give the user a natural immunity to being cut, which is nice and is something, yeah, I suppose. The detriments are also pretty bad though, because to make use of this fruit, you need to commit your own body parts, leaving you incomplete and compromised until their return. And that's where things can go very, very wrong very, very quickly in both combat and daily life. For number 15, now we have the Mato Mato no Mi, a very weird little existence held by Van der Deck in the ninth. And it's a problematic fruit because it is purely destructive with a singular gimmick. It basically boils down to, I can make this thing I touch land on this other thing I've touched. So the utility is really kind of horrendous because you can only use it for destructive impacts such as combat. However, the power score is also quite bad because of the convoluted conditions to activate the ability within combat. It's just such a horrid combination of aspects. Now there is admittedly slightly above potential because Van der Decken was a strange, strange man. And I think that people, how shall I put this, a little less whipped by an underage mermaid princess could make better use of it. But the detriment is also not so great because after eating this fruit, the user needs to be eternally conscious of what they touch because registered targets and objects change automatically upon hand contact. And all around, it's just a pretty niche piece of meh. A description that also applies to our 14th place, the Sabi Sabi no Mi. The ability to rust things, which is, <laughs> well, uh, yay. Look, admittedly, it was fantastic on that one time when Shu used it to immediately destroy one of Zora's swords. And I should make it clear that we are examining the canon usage of the Sabi Sabi no Mi, as well as every other fruit, which is relevant because in the anime, there was a filler scene where Shu actually managed to use this power to rust Zora's arm as well. And if that were possible, then I don't think the fruit would be on this list. However, in the manga, Shu has only been shown rusting metal objects, which makes sense. But also as a result, the power utility and potential of the Sabi Sabi no Mi all take a huge hit because they only operate well under very niche conditions and only for a singular destructive purpose. But on the bright side, I suppose this fruit has absolutely no detriment, so there is that. To 13th place now, we have our first Zoan fruit on the list and the beginning of quite a disappointing trend with the Kame Kame no Mi, a fruit so amazing that Pakoms has only used it that one time for that very specific scenario. This fruit has one great benefit, which is the seemingly impenetrable shell of the total form. However, that doesn't help power or utility too much. The potential is, well, it's a middling number because I'm sure it can be used in ways that we haven't seen, but the detriments are also less than great because becoming a turtle will make you naturally slower and the transformation process rather hilariously makes you lose all of your clothes due to the shell, thus transforming you into a naked shell-bound turtle. Back to Paramecia Town. Now in 12th place, we have the Ori Ori no Mi, another niche Paramecia, which grants pretty incredible power actually, allowing you to encage anyone you touch, which in the large majority of combative situations would be a one-hit victory, really. Although assumedly the strength of the bindings are fixed because they become iron shackles or bars. So if you have an opponent who can break through such a thing, when well, <laughs> you're pretty screwed, aren't you? To put it as bluntly as possible, the utility is horrible because this fruit can only be used for a single purpose. The potential is almost as terrible because the only thing it presents is the potential to do the exact same thing in a maybe different way. Although it doesn't come with a major detriment other than keeping an eye out and making sure not to accidentally bind your allies. And this Paramecian onslaught will continue with 11th place, the Mero Mero no Mi, a fruit which has found its absolutely perfect user in the series being Boa Hancock, but on its own is a kind of completely terrible existence. The thing about the Mero Mero no Mi is that it only 
only actually functions if the user's target is physically attracted to the user themselves. And even then the effectiveness is directly correlated with how much lust that target feels. So if you eat this fruit and you're say of uh, fairly standard attractiveness, then you're going to see fairly underwhelming use. You really do need to be something of a universal sex symbol to access this fruit's potential. And that's just, well, it's probably not going to work for 99% of us. So it's a fruit tied directly to the personality and genetics of the user, which is why it sits at a balanced 50 out of 100, because it's a big, big gamble. And our number 10 spot also sits at 10 underwhelming 50 points, which is the Kilo Kilo no Mi. And this is exactly the same thing as the Tun Tun no Mi, which we've already covered, just much, much worse. So right off the bat, power is going to take a hit because the one attack it does have access to is still insanely difficult to perform. But this time its effect is also an order of magnitude less than the Tun Tun no Mi, so hooray. The utility is similar though, because floating is still pretty revolutionary, but both utility and the potential is lessened because there's less weight to work with when manipulating. And the detriment score is the same, leaving us with a very underwhelming fruit. However, there are at least nine that promise to be even worse. Like our next contender, the Hoya Hoya no Mi, one of the strangest paramecias in existence. A fruit held by Charlotte Daifuku, where the ability is to summon a combat genie. So naturally, power does get a pretty solid score here. It's everything else that is the problem. Being a combat-driven genie, there's not a whole lot of room to use it in a truly versatile way, especially since the genie has a limited distance it can travel from the user. It's kind of like a JoJo stand in that regard, really. A close range JoJo stand. But it also does have hilarious detriments because to keep the genie in existence, the user has to uh, perpetually rub themselves quite vigorously like a lamp, which is less than great for extended use and in battle leaves the user completely vulnerable to attack. So it's a very, very bizarre fruit indeed. Just like number eight, the Chiu Chiu no Mi, which is basically the ability to turn your tears into healing powers for people and inanimate objects, which does sound kind of all right before we delve into it. I mean, for power, it gets an abysmal one because it does nothing for raw combative ability, except the potential of being able to heal yourself. However, in order to do so, you need to activate the strict condition of crying, which might not be a very easy thing to do on the fly. And when you are using it in day-to-day -day life, it's a pretty morbid trade-off to need to bring yourself to tears every time you engage in its use. But here's the real kicker. To perform any sort of grand restorative acts, the user will lose part of their lifespan in exchange for said act. So that's wonderful. We basically have a fruit with no combative benefit, so-so utility, kind of meh potential with the idea in mind that you need to be crying even to access it, and the detriment of a lifespan cost, as well as general lifestyle effects from, you know, all of the crying you'll be doing now. So I think I'm going to pass on this one. But traveling one step ahead to seventh position, we find ourselves back in the Zoan realm with the Inu Inu no Mi model Tanuki, a fruit that I'm sure most casual fans don't even realize exists. This fruit appears absurdly briefly in the series as Tenguyama's teapot, yes, a teapot on Wano. And there isn't really a whole lot to say because even if it wasn't consumed by an object, the ability to become a raccoon and a raccoon human hybrid is less than the greatest thing ever, significantly less, offering very little in the way of power, a tiny bit in utility, slight potential, but at the very least, I suppose no detriments. But it's not at all the kind of fruit one is hoping for when taking a bite from the mystery apple. And likewise, we have the Nagi Nagi no Mi in sixth place. The first fruit on this list with a power score of absolute zero because it grants no raw power whatsoever. And yes, this fruit does have some use in the realm of stealthery, so it's pretty cool if you're an assassin or a spy, but that really is the narrow niche of it. And even then, the generated sound fields do not follow you. They are static creations, much like the room of the Opi Opi no Mi. So even in your very narrow niche department of use, it is still extraordinarily limited. And as much as Rosinante says that he does use the fruit to allow him to sleep better at night, pure silence is actually quite unnerving for most humans. And I don't think people realize just how prevalent sound is, even in the most quiet of situations. In the end though, the Nagi Nagi no Mi simply is another very specific one sort of situation use fruit. It has no power, limited versatility, and even potential mental detriments. And that's why it does land pretty high up on this list here. But breaking into the illustrious, shameful top five, we have a ridiculous creation known as the Gotcha Gotcha no Mi, which was used by Charlotte Nushi, one of the uh, decouplets, which basically allows Nushi to merge himself with other people, which gets used to fuse all 10 Charlotte decouplets together, becoming this giant scythe-wielding thingo. And this is already quite problematic because on its own, the fruit does nothing, nothing at all. It requires the consensual assistance of other people to have any effect, and to truly reach a great effect, it requires a ton of people. And even then, what we saw of it in the series wasn't so great. As such, it's hard to rank according to power because I suppose the power could theoretically be infinite if you just kept absorbing tons and tons of people. But at the same time, we could also give power nothing because it doesn't do 
anything without the other people. And no other area makes up for that either. In fact, they make it much worse. Primarily due to requiring other people to do anything with the ability, but also if you were to merge with another Devil Fruit user, that could potentially even kill you. But still, it's not quite as bad as number four, the Jake Jake no Mi, which has a very similar concept to the Gotcha Gotcha no Mi, except somehow so, so much worse. Because here the user needs to turn themselves into a jacket and then literally be worn by a willing fusion partner, and it can only be one as opposed to seemingly infinite people. But how's that for an amazing devil fruit? The ability to turn yourself into a powerless piece of clothing that is reliant on having someone with actual power wear you. So look, we're well and truly into some joke territory now. Which we will continue with the bronze medal being the Hito Hito no Mi, which is specifically Chopper's fruit and not Sengoku's, which is the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu. And this fruit gives you, a human, the ability to transform into a human or a human-human hybrid, which would still be, according to my calculations, a human. And to answer all of your comments right now, no, this fruit does not grant a human user enlightenment. Oda never said that. It's an urban legend spread by a bad fan translation of an SBS segment. Do not believe everything you see on the internet, even this. Nor does it allow a human user to access Chopper's transformations because those are achieved through a mixture of human and reindeer DNA. The important part there being the reindeer, because as we've already gone over, a mixture of human and human will only result in a further human. A human who has lost the ability to swim and gained potentially nothing at all. Which is why the only score of relevance with this fruit is potential, because it does have the potential to do something to a human user, but it also comes with the great risk of doing nothing at all, thus giving you a curse for no benefit. Still, even that might be preferable to our number two, the Inu Inu no Mi, Monodaxand. Because where the Hito Hito no Mi does nothing, this fruit actively has a mission to negatively impact you. Dachshunds are such fragile little beasts that were bred to hunt tunneling animals, so if you like squeezing through small holes, then hooray, because this is the fruit that will do things for you. But if you like doing literally anything else, then this fruit will hinder that. Because activating any part of your beast form puts you at incredible physical risk of just rupturing your spine for no power benefit, no utility, and very, very minimal potential. I mean, you might be able to awaken it, but really, what is the awakening of the dachshund anyway? This ability would be nothing but a bane on your existence, but at least it's not our number one contender, which is the Sarasarumi model axolotl. And this fruit scores a rather impressive minus five point things because upon consuming it, you would never want to activate its power. Axolotls are waterbound creatures which cannot live on land. However, that's problematic because as a devil fruit user, you cannot activate this power in water lest you become an anchor and drown. It's the most useless devil fruit to have ever been created and even in hybrid form, it will do nothing but cause detriment to a human user. 10 out of 10, highly not recommended as with every other devil fruit on this list. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.